There we go. Us. Us, everyone. Us. Welcome back. Kumite 360. Us. Trust you well. Us. Uh, looking forward to today's <laughs> chat. Uh, this is a, the side angle of the Kyokushin Shuffle. We've had Xi'an Tom on the on the call uh, as a guest in the past, and what a beautiful chat it was. Xi'an Tom, how are you? Colorado, US, giving us some time yep. on the weekend. Thank Us. you so much. How are you? It's uh, it's great to be here with you, Sensei Pat, uh, Patrick, and um, yeah, yeah, I'm doing great. It's uh, about five o'clock in a gorgeous, sunny fall Colorado day. I'm out at the farm today at the uh, yeah. my second dojo here, which is the sort of the filming dojo. So uh, I appreciate you having me on, man. It's, it's nah, well, you know, we keep in touch, and you were such a great guest yeah. a while ago as well. And we, when we've kept in touch, and there's been so much happening, and then I as yeah. we go back and forth, liking each other and commenting on things. I'm like, hey, we got to get you back on, and you were like, yeah, absolutely. And I was like, this would yeah. be awesome, and. Looking forward to catching up for the next hour or so on all things that's been happening at your end, which is the segue, of course, to how is things going? The lots is happening. I'm sure you can share a fair bit with us. Yeah. Well, I appreciate having me on. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, personally, the big news for me is I um, I retired. Yeah, right. About a month ago, Congrats. which is big big for me after about 38 years in the music business. Yeah. And prior prior to that, um, I was a musician, so I I don't really know anything except how to fight and how to play music. So, um, <laughs> so I can't put a nail in a piece of wood, dude. I, I'm yeah. like helpless. <laughs> I really am. But uh, so it's, it's weird waking up with my stress level is like so okay. much down. It's, okay. And uh, I'm going to devote the, the rest of my life to teaching and, and training, of course. Wow. And it's just an exciting and scary thing. And I apologize if this flies because I live on a just, well, just get the chopsticks out. Do, do, do. What are you doing? Yeah, I, no, I, I can't. I've tried. <laughs> believe me. There's, you know, there's horses and cows here. In fact, there's a baby cow born here this morning. Oh, so, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, but so there's some, there's some flies here occasionally. So you That's might see me go like this. Um, but anyway, yeah. So it's nice. To have the stress levels down. I'm excited wow. about my future. It's the last chapter. You know, I'm 63 years old now. Okay. So, it's my last chapter, and I really want to just devote myself to being the best martial artist I can be. Wow. Yeah. Well, there you go. I know you've yeah. just given us a one-minute little blurby, but 38 years in the music industry, and yeah. I've been fortunate to follow you and for those others that follow you on social media to get a glimpse of what the hell that world is it has been for you and, and, and again, to, yeah. I guess, make a decision of that capacity – I mean, it's, yeah. uh, you know, like it's, it was big. It took me, um, it honestly, it took me six months okay. to decide. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've been, I haven't been happy to be really honest okay. with you. I haven't been, I haven't been happy probably since around 2017. Okay. Where I, when um, I helped found a company called Song Trader, a licensing music licensing company. And I left. And after that, I, just, I came from LA to, to my home in Colorado and yes. I just haven't been too happy always happy with training and always happy with the mm. karate and, and uh, I'm very grateful to, to uh, Kyokushin Khan and, and mm. what they, how they supported me through all this transition and everything. So, but now I'm just, I'm just, I literally wake up happy for a change. You know, I'm just Magic. looking forward to, uh, yeah. And I, and I love the, the, the karate community we all share globally. Yeah. Um, and what people, you know, you know, like you and Sammy and Drew and yes, just yes, everybody yes. has, has so many good podcasts and yep. it's really a great community. And I just feel privileged to be part of it. And, um, and so now I really want to, uh, to really explore that even more and just yeah. get up and train and, right. and teach yeah. and travel the world. And that's my, that's okay. my uh, hope. Yeah, and that's what I was uh, going to ask. So, you, so this now, have you in the six months towards your retirement? Did you have a plan of attack? Have you got a plan of attack, or is it because you're in such a great group with uh, Roya, Roya Royama Group? Yeah, and then mm -hmm. uh, uh, you've got various roles. You've been instilled with the Kyoshi title. Congrats on that mm -hmm. level as oh, well. So, thank, lots, lots, thank lots you. is happening. And as you just said, to travel overseas. So what I guess is segued me here is, you know, you got a lot of game, you got a lot of skill and a lot of knowledge to pass oh, on. Thank you. What is the angle that you're going to be presenting this at? Well, you know, it was my daughter that really kept pushing me into doing something where, you know, because, you know, you got to make a living, right? So understood. It's like, oh, you know, I, I like to travel so much that I can't really have a full-time dojo mm. here. I had it in L.A., but 
you know, and I'm writing a book. And it's not a martial Ooh. arts book. It's 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 called Corporate Fitness. It's about using, having a lot of the Budo philosophy and applying it to the business world. So oh, that nice. book's about seventy percent done. But I have been working on it because I've been so tired with okay. teaching seven. I teach seven days a week, and the, the the work plus I'm thinking, you know, I can't get it all done. So my daughter, my daughter's thirty one now. She says, Dad, will you just stop? You're not happy. Just do what makes you happy. Figure it out. So I, I can, I, I'll actually tell you. You're the first person to know that. Um, oh yeah. I've, de- I've developed a teaching app. Oh, beautiful. And I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna debut it um, probably mid November, two to four weeks from now. It's, 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 it's ninety percent done. I shot twenty videos in the last two weeks. Okay. Teaching yeah, videos. Yeah. yeah. And. Well, that's um, exciting. Yeah, I'm putting a couple of little things on YouTube right now, which is World of Budo Arts. I'm just uh-huh. kind of teasing a few things, but not really the teaching part of it. Okay. And I'm really excited about that. And I'm going to be developing a merch store, a new website. It's okay. all going to be coming out Wrong. within a month. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, God, I mean, I just, I'm not trying to take over the world. I just want to well, be able to make a, I just want to make a living and I want to um, yeah, yeah, yeah. share what, just share what I know and, and hopefully, um, well, have enough exciting. people that are interested. Yeah, I mean, who knows? You know. Uh, so, so what angle? Uh, you know, the, what angle would you be? What angle are you? I mean, you know, you, you, seventh then, right? Seventh then. Six. No, I'm six. I just six, got my six. Six. six, uh, six about a year seven. Ago. But my point to that is, how many years in the in in Kyokushin? Well, I started training in karate in 1972. Wow. I started. I started in Weichiru. Okinawan base and I was boxing then I did Krav Maga then I did uh, which uh, Juken, Jukendo which is a mixed martial arts with Nori Banasawa and I didn't start Kyokushu until the mid 90s that's why I was never a fighter I started when I was old and um, <sighs> so I was never a tournament fighter I, was, I grew up sure. in Boston I, I fought a lot and, but I never was a, was a tournament fighter in Kyokushu so probably a big regret in, in a way eh. I also have a big scar in my right shin so I could never have fought full contact anyway so it, with the skin rips open um, but you know, nothing's perfect. And that's, Got you it. know, that's something in the back of my mind that I always sort of, eh. but, um, mm. but yeah, my, my, my focus is to really, uh, study under Okazaki Kancho and Royama Kaicho. And I, I also learn from everybody, you know, I learned, I learned from everyone that I can come in contact with, as you know, we're all, we're all just absorbing we're up from why yeah. watch everything. I meet people. I, I learned from everybody. And that's, um, that's, that's what I was uh, also interested in chatting to you about. And I, the reason I raised that, that, that years of training and so on, because I guess my, the, the, the intriguing or the part that I'm intrigued in is how you're balancing what you're going to teach others and what what your passion is, and and I hope mm. that makes a bit of sense because yeah, it I'm does. Going, I'm going through it to a degree where it's like got to go, got to help. Every, you know, you got to give everyone the basics. You know, my Shian will come in and it's back to basics, back to basics, and I'm like, yep, yeah, you know, we we all get that, we all know that, but then there's such a uh, awesome. Um, you know, like you said, learning curve, Advanced. continuing, yeah. and, and a, and a yeah. fantasy yeah. of like exploring. You know, with with Okasaki Shian. I mean, I've sp- raised this with you in the past. I mean, that guy is phenomenal. He's, like, seriously, he's insane. like, and I, he and really I, is insane. Oh my god! For, you know, and and then for you to have him as as your you know mentor, and then you're kind of going to probably do the oh man, how does he do that? How do we? So my point is, yeah. how are you ba- How do you balance that? You know, so long well, in, in your training. They, 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 they yeah. exactly. Well, we all we all focus on basics. So um, yeah. When you have Ishijima, Shihan, Okazaki, Kancho, and Koichi Ryama, they kind of split it up. But yeah, they're all amazing martial artists. And this great martial artist and other organizations, obviously. Mm. Mm. But as I age, you know, I, I am more um, drawn to the reason and why and how and the bunkai. And obviously we do in Kan, we do a lot of Kobudo as well. Mm-hmm. And so I'm drawn to the tonto and the sai and the, mm-hmm. and the bow and, 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 I still like to bang. I still like to spar and to fight. And, um, but you know, we're getting, I'm getting older. So Absolutely. I really want to be a great teacher. So being awesome. a great teacher is not only having the knowledge, but being able to transmit that knowledge articulately, you know, and, and to, to share the knowledge in a way that people understand. So it was my app and my teaching app. There's going to be sort of, I don't want to give away too much, but there'll be sort of bucket buckets. There will be basics for people that, are starting out. Yes, there'll be advanced advanced street fighting techniques. Okay, because that's how I my students always joke around that I teach street kyokushin. 
similar to Terry, you know, Terry Burke. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he does, yeah. you know, and so I teach a lot of street stuff. Uh, and I do the tournament stuff too, of course, but then in this cop there in this keyhole, and I do a lot of Eken training, the so internal much. that Kaicho Oyama is really, drilled into me for the last, I don't know, I've been with Kachi since 2008. So um, he's, he mm. really drills in the Eakin for the explosive power. And as I get older, as I say, I, I really am drawn to that, but I've noticed I haven't lost my speed. Mm. And it's, I, I, I think in my fluidity, I think it's really due to the Eakin. And yeah, right. um, there's not a lot of people teaching it. And I really right. am trying to, I'm trying to learn as much as I can uh, with in, in that, in that art, in that internal art, because it's helped my karate so much. And so when people come to do private lessons with me or, or when I introduced Ikan to even the MMA type of guys that, that fight, they're amazed by what it does for them in terms of movement, explosive power, zero to 60. Yeah. Because it's working with your electrical system, yeah. whether you're doing standing, standing sort of Ritsu yeah. Zen standing or the movement and moving all as one. It's Ikan's yeah. about moving as one movement. And so that's been a big thing for me. And that's where I'm really focused on okay. uh, between the weapons and the Eakin and of course, the basics as always. Jeez. Yeah. So right. it's a lot, it's a lot. And a lot yeah, of people, um, yeah. it's, we, we do, some of the people don't want to join Khan and I understand why, but they, I don't understand why really, but they, I understand how they think because there's a lot of knowledge to learn. And as, and as we get older, some people just don't want to study that much anymore. After you hit 40 or 50, it's like, you know, I just, don't want to keep learning it's like but i enjoy learning i enjoy learning and well, yeah i get frustrated learning as well just like everybody else and it's like oh well, i gotta learn something else yeah but that's part of the challenge of it it's part of the the reason i do it and we all you do know, it, i think you know Shian, there was um there's a uh in hearing what you're saying right you know if we i call it pillars right so you've just you've named those those things and I call them as pillars and how um, many students, no matter uh, what age, well, well, let's, let's talk from 16 years old and above because, because kids and teens, for example, um, I'm very uh, clear as day, have fun, enjoy yourself, you know, oh, we want to know Carter's and we're nine years old. And it's like, yeah, you can know six to eight, you know, take your course yeah. and one or two pinions you know, just keep your game and you'll be fine. But then when it explores further, you're starting, you know, people start to get a bit older in regards to how much knowledge they can take in. And my point to this is how are you then exploring, you know, you've got all these pillars, right? So what is what is the one that's making you go, hey, as a student of Kyokushin in the next, you know, couple of years, five years of your next part of teaching, you know, you said street fighting, right? So my ears picked up, and I say that because this is the this is the angle I'm heading to. Why you why street fighting? Why do you name it that? What are you talking about in regards to you know how you just referenced you know, Terry Burkett and he he and I and yourself to a degree? Is it the flavor at the minute, or is it is it something that you're? No, it's always yeah. it, it's you know always been there for me. Yeah, it's yeah, always yeah. been there for me because. Okay, I'll try to keep this really short. But, and I say this a lot, and I've done Muay Thai as well. I yes. I don't, and you'll see even my 10 and 12 year old students, they don't use gloves. I don't use gloves. I never have used gloves. I don't like gloves. Got it. There's no gloves in the street. Got the it. way you block, the way you block. I need, I, I just did a video on like nine weapons right here in my hand. Beautiful. Okay. I need my hands in mm -hmm. the street. Um, tournament fighting, there's rules. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with tournament fighting. There's definitely a place for it for a lot of reasons. Mm. But I, I'm talking about purely for self-defense. You exactly. don't have gloves in the street. When people fight like this, I, I never have people fight like this. Their hands have to be out. Um, I need my hands for grabbing. I need my ducate. I need my back fisting to work. Uh, I, need, I need everything. It works. Okay? Yeah, I need the works. The shot that you have and um, so when I say street fighting, I mean the way I block in the street and the way I would block in a tournament, totally different. The way I strike in the street, the way I strike in a tournament, totally different. I teach them different too for different purposes. Um, you know, in street, there's, there's three or four things going to happen. They're going to throw the hook. They're going to mm -hmm. try to tackle you, you mm -hmm. know. And so you gotta, you got to avoid the takedown. So I teach a lot of how to not get taken down okay. and how to get back up immediately. Um, nice. You don't want to be nice. on the ground, obviously. But it's nice. mostly about not being taken down. 
not having someone break that imaginary thing. You know, where's the distance? Oh. How to distance yourself? Got it. Um, and no, I'm not kicking to the head. I'm kicking this way to the knee, not this way to the knee. Yeah, yeah. Things, yeah, things yeah, like that. Yeah, nice. I'm, I'm hitting. I'm hitting. The, I'm hitting oh, the throat. Hitting the eyes. Yeah, exactly. That way, thumb, even the shote, Hey, shote, in the shote, yeah. uh, 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 shoot, yeah. shoot, 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 the rather shote yeah. to the, to the yeah. nose. Yeah, magic. Um, yeah, that's people cool. Grab, people are grabbing you. Love You're it. not going to try to do some stupid move that you see on YouTube that doesn't work, especially if someone's really strong. You try to awesome. bend the arms, like, go ahead, bend it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try, yeah, to, do, yeah. try to do that to my hand. Go yeah, ahead, yeah, try yeah. to do that. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Just pump, I just I punch him right away and smack Beautiful. him right away. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's all cool. All these instant things, when to yeah. strike, when not to strike, how to know if someone is going to hit you. Is yeah. the innate... You know, you can feel an energy, yeah. so you got to develop, but you got to develop that instinct and that mm. sixth sense. Mm. So that's I, cool. I work in I work in fast twitch muscles development. Yeah. Yeah. Speed, yeah. speed and accuracy has always been my mantra. Speed, accuracy. Where are you striking and do it fast? So everyone has different fast twitch muscles. People, some people aren't as quick as others, but you can develop yeah. it to a certain degree. Yeah, that's always so it's, it's a little bit of a different approach. No, and I appreciate you sharing that because and that's that's the fun part of having a chat with someone like yourself. You know, I don't get to go to your school every week or month or year. I've mm -hmm. never been there. And and but yeah. being able to tap into how you again in this quick hour chat, how you teach or what you words you use or what theme or what angle you're going with, that's really cool because um, it's a it's a huge part of what I do as a teacher, huge part meaning um, again. But the hard part for me is balancing the 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 the, the what's the word the history the traditional of, the, the history of, of of full contact karate, but the essence and substance of it is is you know renowned around the world for the pun as as they say punching and kicking. Um, but I'm like oh no no no. That's just that's just one tenth of that's one of the pillars. Yeah, that, that's just that's over here. That, yeah, that's yeah, nice yeah. to have. It's a good spectacle, um, and and it, and it shows who's who's tough. You know, it, it tough yeah. again. We can go into detail, but tough as yeah, in yeah, sure. wow, he's strong. She's strong. That's amazing. And then I'm doing the no no. Nah, nah, oh wow, that's part nah, of it. But <laughs> oh, you, and then I I use the um the language in my school. She and I go. 90% of our kihon is not used in full contact karate. Exactly. What the F? Exactly. You know, like, exactly. Well, that, well I, that brings me back to what you was, were talking about kata. I mean, oh, kata is worthless. Well, if you know what you're doing, it's not worthless. Hmm. There's so many benefits to it. I mean, now here, I'm talking about UFC kind of MMA guys or Muay Thai guys. Or, uh -huh. You can be a great – you can be a really good fighter without kihon, but once – I mean, without kata. But once you understand kata and what those strikes actually mean, if you – Train your body for the for your muscle memory, your body mechanics um, that you can use outside the dojo and non-tournament stuff. Like you said, so many knee kicks, so many eye strikes, so many throat Ooh. strikes that you can't do. In the, but Ooh. if you understand what they are, you practice it. But, you know, it's funny. You, you were mentioning about um, the toughness. I just had this conversation with one of my students this yeah. weekend. Since they, yeah. and, since they ended, he just tested for his sandan. Nice. And, Congrats. You know, we get a lot we – get, we get, yeah, we get a lot of – people come to our dojos, yours included, I'm sure, or don't come because they're afraid. Oh, these guys are just going to beat the shit out of me. Mm. You know, but they, yeah, I mean, they come thinking they're just going to get worked. It's like, wait a minute, we do that. It takes time to build your your body conditioning. We don't just come in and beat the crap out of you. Yes, we take full contact punishment. There's no question. But you work up to it. But there's a, the, you know, it's a double-edged sword. It's good in the sense that Kyokushin has that reputation because, mm -hmm. you know, you want to be you want to be feared a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's let's be honest. Yeah. Um, and it, and 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 it, it is it's a good reputation to have. The credibility. Flip of side, it. Yeah. 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 yeah exactly. But the, the the flip side of that is that you don't. Sometimes students don't want to come in because they're afraid, and, mm -hmm. and we need we need to teach that you know you will be toughen your body with all the body conditioning mm. and the shin conditioning, arm pounding, all these things we do. But it takes time. We do it gradually. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, because you do you do need a a, a, a a tough body. I remember when I was studying Weichiru when I was younger. Mm. My my teacher, his body was like just his entire body was like a pipe. I don't know if you know much about Weichiru, but it's nope. everything was like you no. Know, this is the this arm pounding. It all came from okay now, yes, right? Yes. Weichiru goes you know sure. But Weichiru was was really tough. So I grew up in that kind of a environment where it was a lot of body conditioning, like back in the early seventies, and, and back then everything was full contact. 
there wasn't a lot of sport fighting. Yeah. It was awful contact. So, and um, but it it um, for the, nowadays it kind of Kyokushin has this thing like, oh wow, I don't Kyokushin. I don't want to go into Kyokushin dojo. It's too tough. But it really is too sad because we teach budo, and that's what's needed. We do yeah. teach budo karate with all the pillars you were suggesting: yeah. kihon, kata, kumite. We also have kubodo and ikan and kan. Beautiful. And then, um, so we have a couple of other other pillars there uh, to use your terminology. Um, yeah. But ultimately, as we talk about it, I, I just did a video on budo. I don't know if you saw it; it just came out a few days ago, and um, it's about the essence of budo and what we do, and the ultimate, obviously, which is the character development, which we dire we need direly in in this world you know people's character it's just oh, it's it's pathetic yeah you know uh, mate that's it's another sad, that's sad yeah 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 that, that i was trying to find the word yeah sad because and this is why we got to chat like this you know we got to i don't know there's a part of me that when i when i reach out to do chats and with people i'm i'm trying to build oh i'm not i'm not building anything i'm trying to just continue to uh, get that exposure out there that these words and these themes are commonly used. And then there's probably a lot of people here going, yeah, right, we do it at our school, mate. You know, we, we, we do the same thing. And I'm like, well, then, man, we got to talk more about it. We got to explore. Yeah, yeah. More. Um, you got to evangelize, evangelize that. that yeah, yeah. I just feel, I mean, I mean, and I, I, I'm sharing with everyone here, there's there's a, there's a great part of obviously staying connected with what we're doing. We as in in the karate karate world, kyokushin world, because we follow each other on social media to a degree, right? But then there's a part right. of me that's like, fucking hell, man, we're missing a big chunk of, um, like you're saying, like you just just hearing you say, then ah, oh, still still missing out on some numbers because people don't want to come into the dojo. It's like why? Yeah. Why not? Not not why you, but like why in general? Yeah, no, I, I understand. Yeah, Fuck, you know, like why are we still? Well, having... there's, a, there, there's there's so much. There's so many reasons. I mean, uh, there's so many distractions we have now. We didn't have all these distractions when we yeah. were growing up. I mean, I'm I'm older than you are, but you know, we we played sports and we weren't yeah. on social media. We weren't on our phones. We didn't have computers, obviously. Mm. So we were very physical. Um, I was, we, most of the kids were very physical. We played mm. all the sports, baseball, football, hockey, mm. you know, basketball and karate was fairly new. And my dad was a boxer and I was growing up in Boston. And, and so I was very physical and, um, I was getting mm. in a lot of fights when I was younger. And my dad said, well, we're going to put you in a karate school. And they wouldn't take me cause I was a kid. There was only adults. And my dad would go back went back like three times and they finally said, okay, you can come in. Now I think I was 11 then. Mm. And I was a small 11. I was a small 11, you know? And, um, but that made me fall in love with it. And also the TV show Kung Fu was just coming out in 1972. And that I was just addicted to that show. And, yeah. and that show had a lot of philosophy in it, you know? And it was, it was based about, it was more Kung Fu. And, you know, David mm. Carradine had, the character had come from China and he's living in the West and just an incredible show. Always had a, always had a, um, a theme to it, like a, a theme of Budo, to be honest with you. Got it. So that, perme that permeated me just watching it, but it was my first exposure to it. The first exposure to it was not about fighting. It was mm. about, oh, it was about the essence of not fighting, but if you had to fight, you took care of business. And, uh, but it was always with, the, the, the violence was always commensurate with the threat, mm. if you know what I mean. Yep, it wasn't, it, gr gr it wasn't, wasn't gratuitous violence. It wasn't just beating the shit yeah, out of each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, you did what you had to do. That's really the essence of Budo. Mm. You know, you're, you're ending the conflict. And sometimes it's with violence, but the violence will, will, will stop more violence. So it's kind of a weird oxymoron there, but no, 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 that's you know. a good point. Yeah, no, again, and again, you're sharing with us the history of what you saw in comparison to what we are seeing now and what we're seeing. Yeah, was, now. Exactly. Let's say, yeah, let's say 10, I got 11 year old daughter, eight year old boy, and we're, we're watching UFC. You know, we're, yeah. we're watching it. You know, it's, it's, on, well, it's, yeah. on, it's on it, yesterday. And we, want, we watch UFC. That's the other thing. It's like there's some good ones. Uh, fighters and some bad ones. And I say bad ones, I'm looking, I'm thinking about, you know, how they act and how they, how they mm, talk to each other. Themselves. Now I had, the, yeah. And I had this conversation with someone not long ago and they brought up a very valid point, which was sort of flew in the face of what I was saying. And they said, well, you know, Muhammad Ali talked a lot of shit, mm, mm, you know, mm. it's like, but Muhammad Ali could always tell was tongue in cheek. Mm. 
he was always had a sense of humor about it, even though like, you're so ugly, you know, things like yeah, that. Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. So yeah, they he talked shit too, but it was sort of tongue in cheek. But now when you get people like Conor McGregor throwing something through a bus window uh, and injuring people, or or yeah. people calling each other's mothers like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy like, stuff. It's like it's like okay, that that's not and yeah, it, good point. And it's a martial art. It's just, it just it it doesn't. Well, and people think it's okay. Yeah, no, people no, think no. it's okay to talk like that. It's not. No, 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 no. That's no. correct. And I think, yeah, and that, yeah. Again, back to back to uh, people like yourself and us raising this stuff, so others can go, oh yeah, shit, martial arts is more of the uh, Buddha angle of um, what we're trying to accomplish here. You know, one of the key things that um, what you just reminded me of is how I speak. Again, to, we we got to talk about next. We're talking about next generation here. We're talking about the kids, the kids and teens, and even young adults that are coming through, um, and how they have to bow on us before they come into the mm -hmm. school. And if they don't, I give them a bit of a, hey, "What do you think you're doing?" And the parents now don't even walk in before they do. The parents, you know, and, you know, some parents might slide in, and I go, "Excuse me, get the fuck, push yeah, me." Right. What do What do you think you're doing? You I just did a video. I just did a video on etiquette this past week. Oh, man. It'll be out. It'll be out soon. I might put that one up on YouTube. Actually, yeah. just did it because you're absolutely right. How to bow? How to? It's self respect, and you're going to give respect. Yeah, but you're yeah. also going to respect the art. You respect the art. We're studying an art. People yeah. forget that. Yeah, it's yeah. not just yeah. fighting. Nice. Fighting to me is a residual benefit of Got the it. art. Got it. You're going to learn to fight. You're going to learn to fight, but it's an art. Yeah. So and um. Jitsu, Budo, yeah, is Bushido code. You got Budo, you got Ujitsu, which is right. you know, more of the technique and science of it. Yeah, it, it is a by it's an art of fighting in a self-defense. But with that comes certain aspects of of the respect. Yep. You gotta respect what you're doing. You yep. know, and I think that that's the problem. And like you said, the fact that we're having this conversation is good. And, and yeah. hopefully some other te teachers kind of drill that into the students. I just went, I'm not going to mention any names. I went to a Shotokan dojo not long ago. Oh. And um, and it was just like, everyone's talking. No one's. Sloppy. There's, it was just sloppy. <laughs> like, you know, the Kyokushin dojos. Most, no one talks in the class. No. You talk before class, after class. But during the class, yeah. it's, it's, it's this way. Yeah. And, and and I'm seeing um, some of these other dojos. There's, there's Got no, Got it. you know what I mean? It just it makes me go. <laughs> makes yeah, me yeah. Sick. Great, great call. Cool. I say great call cool again in the in the bias of our of our style, but again in sharing with others out there. This is great reminders for all all of us, you know. To um, geez, it just give me a little bit of a. I snapped at my adult students last week. I snapped. I snapped, mm -hmm. like I lost my shit and I felt, you know, embarrassed, you know, silly about it. But, you know, where it comes from for me is that hunchy, hunchy Eddie Yemen is 92, 93 years old. And then he I taught just, my teacher who, you know, is celebrating 50 years next year, for example. And then there's me and I'm like, no, uh, uh. You can't be exactly nah. Fuck, I'm sorry. Like I'm like yeah. not, not sorry, but sorry about yeah. um act, uh, acting this way. But everyone has to get there out of your you know. And you know what? And then I was like, why? Why do I have to do that? Why do I have to yeah. do that? And I was like, well, what happened? How, how, how was good that you did it? But how? And then I say, you know, the great man behind you there, Sosa. I said, how, how, yeah. how do you think he held the line? How, how do you think he yeah. had to hold the line for for all those beasts that were coming through? And then, you know, he had to instill some badass discipline, oh, yeah. boys and girls. Yeah. Well, you know, you know some of those some of those dojo uh, dormitory chiefs. They were not. Yeah. Yeah. You know who they. You know who they yeah. were. Yeah. 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 They were tough guys. And uh, but you know, Kaicho says the same thing. Ryama, but. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we can't have it watered down because it. if we don't, if we don't, just like you're saying, if we don't instill it, the, the students won't, the, the, those students you have that are brown belts, green belts, they'll be teachers someday right. and they won't do it. And then after a while, it's like, eh, whatever. So it's really important Ooh. to the etiquette. It's really important. Can you imagine two generations from now and you walk into a Kyokushin Dojo and everybody's just walking around talking and, and, and not bowing and walking in front of a senior and, and pushing each other. To, I mean, it's like I've oh, seen it, and, and it makes me nuts, man. Like, you, yeah, you know. But um, keep... I always, t I always keep my my senior students. This is where, we, where I educate my senior students. We'll go out to a dinner and maybe have some drinks. But this is what we talk about because mm -hmm. I make sure that those senior students 
are in charge. I'm not in charge. Roger that. I'm not yeah. in charge. They're in charge. They're yeah. in charge of keeping the legacy strong. Got it. Absolutely. And, um, so then when I see one of my senior students not adhering to it, then they get their ass beat. Mm. That's when the, that's when the, the beating, that's when the beating will be. Um, so, but yeah. uh, they don't, I, I, haven't, I haven't had to really do that because they know. Yeah. They don't want their ass beat. They don't no. they know because they keep, people have to keep each other in check. You know? Yes. And if you have, say you have five senior students, each student has to keep each other in check. Correct. That's their role. Correct. That's their role. Time. You know? time, with, time with how yeah. I do it. And, oh. and, and, and no one no one wants to be the person that doesn't toe the line. You don't want to be the person that steps out of line. Mm. So, well, you know. see how you just use that word. My, my saying is hold the fucking line. Hold yeah. the line, mate. You know, don't do it for the bosses. I, you know, I use that yeah. word. You know, do it for the big, big, big bosses. Or I said, I said, what? I, and then I used it. What? What? What happens if? What happens if one of them came in right now? Yeah. Well, what? What? what exactly. You know, like, like, like the old, like the old, like the old fucking principal that would come into the classroom days, and everyone would sharpen up, and then the teacher would be like, "What the? F what does yeah, it take? Exactly. What does it take this fucking guy to come in here? And now you all yeah, got to yeah. act your age now. And it's like." Yeah. What are we still going to keep? Yeah, why, why, aren't you, why aren't you? Well, first of all, it's disrespectful to you. And so, again, I think it's incumbent upon the senior students to say, and I've seen my other senior students when I was, had my dojo in Santa Monica, in LA, mm -hmm. they would uh, they would say, don't don't say that to, to Sensei. Don't, no, don't do that. Don't, yeah. you know. Uh, the they, yeah. they, would, they would tell me after I had to take so-and-so aside and tell them, mm, that's, not, that's not cool. And then they don't do it again. But yeah. I saw it. Yeah. I'm not yeah. going to say anything. I yeah. saw it. Yeah. I'm waiting yeah. to see if my senior student does anything. Got it. And then it, Got it. I, I hold those guys accountable. Like, I don't hold a, a yellow belt accountable too no. much. It's not my job. It's my senior's job, my brown belts, my showdowns. You hold them accountable. Great. You know? Yeah. And because yeah. you're, you're, they, everyone looks at the next level. So mm. they may look at you, the students may look at you and go, well, Boy, I, I, there may be an orange belt or a blue belt saying, "Wow, Sensei Patrick, I'll never be a fourth down. I'll never be a Sensei like him." But I'm looking at your brown, the brown belt senior student. That's who he's looking at. Maybe not you, because you're the big chief. You're the big chief instructor mm -hmm. with four stripes in your belt. But that orange belt might be looking at the green or brown belt, watching him or her. So that person needs to really. It really happens. Be, it it happens a lot in the kids and teens and. I have my daughter who's five who even sees the color of the belt, for example, and and how come he or she's got that? And it's like, well, he or she has done the training. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. no fucking rocket science to it, look, young girl. This is it. you got to go to training. you got to rock up every week. And that is still even a greater reminder for even the adults, Xi'an, you know? Yeah, and, oh, yeah. Uh, totally. and, and in any discipline, in any discipline, even so – yeah, that's good. good no, I'm saying another video. Another video I just did a couple of weeks ago uh, was on consistency and training. Nice. So that'll be out. That'll be out too. I'm yeah. trying to think of everything. You know. Oh man, man I've done the same thing. You know? I did a similar thing to what you're saying here. Um, I did it yeah. over COVID because I was like, I'm putting a lot of this content out to the students, but why don't I just tidy it up a bit? Well, you, and I, I had a whole bunch of themes as well. You know, uh, yep. exactly yep. that consistency over intensity and blah blah blah. All this yep. stuff. Um, but you also have a great book. One of my favorite books is Fred Oh, yeah, student. that was cool. Yeah, 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 and you did a great job with that, and I was honored to even be part of that. But uh, yeah, I, what I what I loved is reading everyone else's. Well, um, uh, because yeah, I'm yeah. looking, I go, okay, I want to see the similarity, and yeah. then of course I I picked up things just reading from other people going, oh, that's interesting. So oh. it was a great book. If you if you out there haven't gotten it, uh, how do that's you get cool. that books? That's just on still this get it? For, forever the student, and that's just yeah. uh, on pay hip, as in like you just download it. I've, it's it's free. It's free. Oh, it's free. It's a yeah, great yeah. book, everybody. If you don't yeah. have it, go get it. Yeah, it's free. Yeah, again, it was just a, it was a couple of bucks at the time to help me cover for the the production of it all, and, and it was like, holy shit, this is not as easy as I yeah. thought. And, but yeah. um, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, and again, you know, with what you just brought up, then that that's part and parcel of the, these conversations. You know, even if we were at a bar down your way in Colorado, I'd be asking you these same questions. We'd be theming yeah. off and bouncing off this stuff because that's the part of um uh, that I feel that there's so much knowledge out there yet. Yet we don't, we, as in the enthusiasts, um, kind of just go, oh, I don't know, I hate that, I hate when yeah. people go, okay, have you listened to, have you, have you watched Sean Tom Callahan stuff? 
Who? What? And I'm like, oh, fuck it. Right. Get you. Go, go, venture, <laughs> go, venture, go venture or have a look. And um, there is so much, um, you know, knowledge out there, which is cool. Hey, Shian, um, I'm looking at your logo out there, your, your organization, your group, World Budu Arts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What, That's what, it. What, how, what is in the middle? What's it, what does it say in the middle there in, in Japanese? That's Budo. That's the that's, uh, that's the anagram for Budo. Yeah. I, I, you know, I haven't done what I wanted to originally do with 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 this. I started World Budo Arts in two thousand nine as my own brand. Yes. Of course, I'm under Kyokushin Khan. Yes. The idea and the reason I called it that was the idea was to build an academy, and Got any it. martial art that followed the ethos and the principles and the philosophy of Budo mm -hmm. could be could be an affiliate kind of. It could be judo. It could, it could be anything mm -hmm. as long as the train training with the right. Heart. It was going to be, you know, five or six different types of martial arts. It's going to be a it. big academy. I never got it off the ground. It was really extremely costly. Of course. But so I'm, I'm doing something different. But that was the derivation of the war, of the company yep. of the World Budo Arts. And um, so yeah, so that was the. Uh, but I, I'm happy with it. And yeah, yeah. since 2009, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of morph it into a little bit of different thing. But. Uh, like I said, since I retired now, I've only been retired less than a month. So I have a lot of a lot of exciting plans, my personally exciting plans. And um, and people like you supporting me is just it makes me feel so good. When yeah. you just mentioned something, I had to laugh at to myself because yeah. when you go to a bar, I love and most of the people at, at your level and, and yeah. our level and and, yeah. and we love talking about this stuff because yeah. it inspires each other, it keeps us on our game. Plus. And um and I've been so stressed out these years. You know, right. the music business is not what it used to be, as you probably know. It's true. Sure. It's, it's it's all data now. It's it's just crap, yeah. in my opinion. Sure, um, sure. Of course, there's good there's good musicians everywhere, but it's just the business of music is not what it used to be, and it's definitely not fun like it used to be. Yeah, martial arts is martial arts is fun. Yeah, it's fun. It's intense, yeah. but yeah. it's fun. Mm. And it's um and when you have like minded people uh, like mm. that are watching this podcast. Mm. Um, you have these really interesting discussions and mm -hmm. like I said, it, inspire, it inspires each of us to be better. And oh. that's what this game is all about. Self-improvement. That's what character is. That's what Budo is. You grow little by little. It's about self-improvement. That's, and that's where, what we're trying to do. That's where forever the student came from, Shian. It was having a yarn with my beautiful wife in the kitchen one, one day. And, and, and I'm like, you know, thinking of this and thinking of that. And, you know, you burst, you burst out a couple of concepts uh, to break up the norm of, you know, husband, and father of three and all the work career, I work full time. And then you just, bah. And she goes, oh, you just, you like that, whatever. You're like forever the student, you know, you just, oh, and I went, boom, oh. that's it. I went, you know, and wow. she said that. And I went, that's wow. it. She's my, she's my. Ah, news. <laughs> <There you go>. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's my, that's, that's it. I needed to bounce something off you. Okay. Thanks. And then she's like, what the fuck? And I yeah. just piss off. Yeah, right. But um, well, like, like my daughter had said, dad, yeah. you, you, this is what you love. This is your passion. Do it full time. Don't worry yeah. about the money. Just don't worry about it. Just do it. It's yeah. like, okay. It's yeah, scary, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Doing, I, you know, taking that big leap was scary, but it's been less than a month and I haven't made 10 cents. I'm excited as hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, well I man. teach, of course, but yeah, no, 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 no doubt, no doubt. Hey, um, so, so, listen, oh. go, one of the one of the beautiful things that had popped up on your socials the other week was your attendance at one of the most amazing event in martial arts history. Oh. I would probably put it. Oh, Keep, walk us through that. What an amazing oh, that was crazy. Crazy. night with so many. <laughs> Uh, yeah, what, oh one of our God. one of our Aussie legends, Richard Norton, was was presented yeah. there yeah. with the Chato brothers. I, 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 so I said, to, "Walk us through it." I walk said, us through it. Well, I was the one that recommended Higgin to get into the Black Belt Hall of Fame. Oh, no to shit. George. How did you? How did you, then, you know Higgin? I know. Oh, of course. Yeah, oh, I know I was, I'm, I was in like, LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of yeah, course. course. All and, based um, out of there. And yeah. so, so I met George Chung, the publisher, on the phone through a friend of a friend. And he called one Saturday morning, actually. I'm thinking, oh, wow, this is fantastic. We had yes. the most incredible discussion. Yes. Never met the guy before. And we were talking about Budo, which is my favorite subject. And Tom, that, he goes, you know, I'm bringing, I brought, I bought, he said, I bought um, Black Belt Magazine, I want to say last July. It must have been maybe sure. last November. But I think he said, like, it was like 10 months ago, he bought the magazine. Yes. And he says, I want to, I'm, I'm digitizing everything. I'm going to bring it back. And yes, I'd love to, I'd love to do a lot more with traditional and Budo and the real karate. Wow. Spit, that, that conversation. 
And I was so inspired after that. And we became very close right then mm. on that conversation. And then he said, you know, Tom, I don't know much about Kyokushin. And this guy, George Chung, is a multi-time national champion Taekwondo. Back in the 70s, he had, he had books out. He's on the cover of Black Belt, I think, himself. And uh, so he's no slouch at all. He's a serious martial artist. Mm. But now, now he owns like streaming TV stations and he's very successful. Wow. And, he, and he bought the magazine. He thought it was just kind of laying there. Yeah, sure. You know, with this legacy magazine. Yeah. So I didn't know much about Kyokushin. And we started talking and, and um, he said, I'd like to really feature Kyokushin. Huh. I said, well, you sh- don't feature me. You got to feature my teacher. My yeah, teacher yeah, is yeah, the sure. And uh, so that's how that conversation went. Right. And then, then he says, you know, I'm going to have a two-year Hall of Fame, like for two years, 23 and 24, 2023, 24. I'm going to have a bunch of these people. I want to put your teacher, Royama, but you got to give me some more information on them and this and that. So over a several month period, right. I did that. And then a, a conversation after that, he says, oh, I see, you know, Dolph Lundgren. I said, oh, Dolph's a really good friend of mine and, and training partner and just a, a personal friend. And he's trained yeah. with me many times. And he goes, and he said, uh, well, we get a, we, you know, he's great. He's a real deal. I said, oh, yeah, he's a real deal. And then he says, well, we're going to have a, we're going to have a hall of fame on this date. And we're going to launch the magazine. And I said, you should put Dolph in the cover. Oh, that's a great idea. So he put Dolph in the cover. And, um, and then we're talking another time. And he, I said, you know, have you thought about putting some other people like, like some jujitsu guys or something like, like Higgins, yeah. Higgins great. And uh, he was like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah okay. I know who Higgin is, but but then somebody else talked to him like a few weeks later at a okay. lunch, bumped into him, and then he decided to put the whole all the brothers, the five brothers on there, which is great. Of course, they're amazing, right? Yeah. And Richard yeah. Norton was there, and and, and oh. um, you know Cynthia Rothrock, and, yes. and I mean just everybody was there. I was out my eye, and of course Michael Jai White, and he sat. It was Michael Jai White, Michael's wife. Dolph, me, and a couple of my, my friends, Slavi Slavov and, and Venti Sholin from uh, so, uh, from um, Shinkyokshin. And we just had a blast because I had, I had a guest list I could bring. So I brought some yeah, of those beautiful. guys that were in LA. Yeah. And we just had a ball. I know. And, and, I mean, come on, Scott. I mean, so many people were there. It's like mind blowing. And because I was sitting with Michael Jai and Dolph, everyone was coming over to them of as well. Of course. And it was just like, wow, it was pretty, it was pretty heady. I was, I was in heaven. Man, so, and I got to get up there and 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 present the award with Dolph because Kaicho didn't fly in from Japan, so no. um, it was just yeah, I was just so grateful to Black Belt Magazine and grateful to George, and um, and so now we have a great relationship with them, and I've been uh, I've written a couple of small articles for them already, and I'm going to continue to be a contributor for Black Belt Magazine and things like that. So congrats! Yeah. So 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 it's going back to print, or it'll be within a digital form yeah, subscription it's pr- print. Print as well as digital. So I just ordered my subscription, and uh, I just ordered a bunch with with Dolph on the cover because that's the Hall of Fame issue. Has yeah. it's all kind of stuff. So you can go to blackbeltmagazine.com or Facebook yeah. or anything, and yeah, yeah. and uh, Kaichi Royama is in there as well with a yeah. bunch of pictures and stuff. Yeah, so, so, so some black, of it yeah, on the post, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. very cool. Yeah, yeah, that was the night of nights, wasn't it? And and oh. I was lucky. I've I've interviewed uh, and had Richard Norton. And he's oh. just such, he's such, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had him on. and it Handsome was, guy too. Super can, handsome. Can go. like. I geez. mean, it's like, are you kidding? Are you kidding? Uh, you, know, like, you know, he's got so many, he's, 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 oh, geez, like the history of his karate here in Australia. Because he, in a yeah. quick summary, and if I can do it just some justice, he was under uh, Hanchi Tino Sobrano, under Goju. I know. And, all right, and I then know it Tino. worked its I, way. I know into, Tino's son. Yeah, yeah, and then it worked into um, um, Bob Jones type. Uh, you know, they they formed, uh, and Bob Jones and him have got a massive name here in striking and uh, here in Australia. And then their art went into another world of kickboxing. And then he's then trained with the Machado guys. So he's got, yep, I don't know what that's, Danny is yep. in BJJ, and then his movie career and his stunt movie career. career. Yep. And then he, you know, he's got a. Uh, I was just showing my wife yesterday. He's having breakfast with, um, I've forgotten his name, Char- Charlie, the guy from Sons of Anarchy, um, uh, the actors, and he's just hanging out with all these music. And, yeah, these legacy is just phenomenal. And then he's up there giving the Machado their uh, recognition on the night. And I was like, yeah. oh, I was just talking to Shion Tom about that. So, yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. 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 Um, so what? What happens now with the with that? But that's such a massive um, icon, you know, 
brand in the states and around it's, the world. It's been a, the world. it's a huge a huge job for George and his team. He's got a yeah. great team around him. Yeah, and um, he's got a really good strong team around him. And and it's a huge undertaking. It's expensive. You know, he bought yes. the magazine. Then had a, then he digitized what sixty years or something. Um, yeah. You know, so he's he's got his heart in it, and uh, and uh, I think I, I really hope it it um, it does what he what he hopes it'll do. Of course, it's, everything's digital now, but it's mm. nice to have a hard copy of the magazine on your coffee table as well. You know, yeah, and I think yeah, that's just what I'm trying to catch off you, trying to feel the flavor of what it will produce, yeah. or what where it where, where it can head. And I, I was fortunate um, to work with Blitz Martial Arts Magazine, which is the the the, the exact same. Um, uh, you know, respectability of, of Black Belt magazine here in Australia. And I was, okay. I was on that for two and a half, three years as as a as an account manager, senior account okay. manager. So, so helping, helping, helping um all martial arts styles, you know, put features in for them and 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 show them the commercial right. side of hey, to be part of this magazine, it costs X amount, but we can put your um upcoming seminar or upcoming um, right. event and and yes it was cost it cost and but i had to generate yes. a monthly, i had to generate a monthly revenue stream for it from a commercial point of view so that it was sure. able to be printed and done. i've been in that world and my yeah. point is it's it's it was our it was the it was our angle of connecting with other arts, other styles, other people, and and seeing who got promoted and who won the titles and all these f- yeah, amazing yeah, yeah, things yeah. that are happening. But now we can just jump on someone's social media page and we can get updated yeah. you know, in a matter of seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why I was like, I wonder where it's – not wonder. Well, hope- you know, it's, it's – no, well, you hope because it's, it comes down to editorial, uh, the editorial, right? Who mm. who's, who's picking what you're just saying to make it interesting? Mm. You know, who's fighting the UFC, who's doing traditional jiu-jitsu, who's doing salat, who's doing this, who's yeah, doing yeah, kitchen. Yeah, yeah. Who, what's going on with the, with this world of martial arts? Yeah. And as as, uh, as I was speaking with George about it, um, is also about what about the tradition of Budo? What, where is the essence of the martial arts? It's not just a sport. And you know, let's let's go, let's let's the sporting aspect is of course legit, but let's mm. not forget the truth, the ultimate mm. truth. Which is Budo, you know. And, um, so yeah. he he wants to bring that back. To yeah, because you know, and I'm finding my way in certain um, um, content at the minute. And Hicks and Gracie he was just on. A, I love yep. Hicks and listening to him all the time. And now he talks like how you're talking, and how the you know the I'll respectfully say it, the the older generation of senior leaders now are going into the whole hey. Enough with the sports side of this shit. We got to keep going yeah. back to understanding why the hell this was this exactly. started. And he was he's yep. huge on um, yeah. There's a sports side that's nice. However, yeah. however, we got to show you the self defense stuff. And, and well, I, I blame the te- I blame the teachers. I blame the teachers, and I blame. I mean, when I say blame, I don't really mean it like that. But I mean, you know, when it was my students. Um, we, if they say, oh, I want to fight in Costa Rica, we have a tournament coming up yes. in Costa Rica, the first All-Americas tournament. And it's like, you want to fight? Okay, that's fine. But when they come in, I don't say, hey, I'm going to make you a champion. Right. Who cares? It's not about making you a champion. It's about learning a martial art. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And there's, there's, a, there's, there's a sporting aspect to it, but that's just to test your courage, your skills. But it's limited because there's a lot of rules. You know, even yeah. in Kyokushin, full contact, there's a lot of rules. So... If you're training just for the sport of it, there's a lot of things you're probably not getting that yes. you would need in the street. If you're fighting with your hands down here or you're yeah. only punching here, I mean, yeah. what have you? I mean, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. So, Shion, mate, it's been anyway. 50 minutes. We've got about five or so minutes left. To, yep. to, uh, see, I told, no, but this is the cool Time bit. flew. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that, that's the magic of of uh, talking to passionate people. And again, like you said, this, this breaks my week up perfectly to get to tap into someone like yourself. Um, and, and you giving me your time is uh, appreciated. So what happens from here? Where, where, what, what, what can we, what do you think we do in the, in the Kyokushin landscape? What are you going to be pushing over the next five years? You know, you've given us, or you've given me a real good heads up in, Hey man, keep the, keep the voodoo, keep the voodoo up and keep the standard and etiquette up. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 What, yeah, what yeah, are yeah. you pushing uh, in your well, position? Whole, uh, What's happening? Well, 
uh, you know, Kite Show's 77 years old. He's still Ooh, doing it. But congrats. For, for, for what, I, what I really like to see happen, and I like to uh, play my little small role in it is, is to, as, and you do, and Sami, and a lot of people do, yes. is to, just to bring the organizations together without mm. any animosity. Mm-hmm. And because we're a huge community, and the fact that we've all, mm. we, we've all been through this really, really rigorous and difficult training to get where we are. Mm. We've all exper- we all sh- have a shared experience, in other words. And, you know, not a lot of people can get through this. Mm. It's brutal. Kill mm. shit is brutal. Mm. And, and I think we need to keep it pure and keep that level high. And don't let these tests get off easy. Don't just give belts away. Got it. That test, that test has to be difficult. has to be, you have to earn that belt. You know, you have to earn it. And then also the, the organizations need to support each other. So Kyokushin, IFK, you know, um, Ishin yeah. Kyokushin, Kyokushin Khan, IKO, all of them. And, and it'd be nice if we kind of, you know, put our differences aside a little bit and try to support each other uh, regardless of the organization. I would like to see that. It's happening more and more. Yeah. People like you, people like you that are, are, are have a podcast and yeah. have a microphone like you do. Uh, mm. To me, that's the most important thing because we don't want it to fragment so much because the more it fragments, the more it gets watered down. And over mm. the next generation or two, it's going to be a shell of what it so intended it to be. You know, I know Cameron Quinn's out there doing, obviously doing his yeah. part. I mean, he's a major guy, Judd Reed, all the greats, all the greats are doing it. But we need, I think we need more communication amongst ourselves and keep each other in check and mm. and with, with, with a good heart and, and inspire one another so we can keep inspiring these other smaller schools yeah. and even independent dojos and um, to learn and not to be complacent. Uh, like I said earlier, a lot of these older guys, Yeah. when I say older, I'm talking about in, in their 40s, which are not old, but they think, yep. okay, I've got three or four strikes, my belt, I'm done. I'm just going to ah. continue doing my key on. It's like, come on, there's a lot to learn still. Yeah. You don't have to learn maybe at the pace you learned before. Take your time. Got it. But there's so, there's so much to learn. And Oh, uh, I'd like to learn the tone for, but uh, just don't. pick it up, mess around with it. Got it. You might, lo- you might love it. I'll do one. I'll leave you with this. I remember this what Kaicho said years ago, and you asked me about what inspired me. It's like one thing that hit me hard with Kaicho said years ago, he said, real karate starts at 50. I've said this a couple of times on podcasts. And I asked him, you know, what do you mean? We all asked him. He wasn't just speaking to me. He was speaking with a bunch of us. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, you know, your body, you can't bang as hard anymore. Mm -hmm. So now you you go into the deeper meaning, the bunkai, the application, not just Mm -hmm. the application of bunkai, but you know, even the history or the, the like I say, the why, mm-hmm. why are you training? What, what, yeah. is, what is it? What is it? What, is, how has it affected you? Yeah. And if it has, if it has affected you in such a positive way, why don't you share that yeah. with someone else? Not just punching. I can teach a monkey to punch and kick. Can I? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's easy. Let's teach each other to be good people. Like so yeah. said, if everybody trained, there'd be no wars. Yeah. So that's about character, ultimate truth. Who are you? Yeah. That's the ultimate truth. You know, and I think if we could keep that right in the front of our brain while yes. we even punching and kicking, like yes. this is about who you are, yes. not about me showing you the how tough I am and I can punch and kick really strong. No, I want to teach you how to reach something deep inside you to make you a better person and reach your potential. So yes. then you can share it. So like pay it forward, so to speak. Yeah. You know, yeah. inspire, inspire, inspire other people. Yeah. And that's how we everybody's character gets raised a little by Absolutely. little by little. Oh. That's it. That's amazing. That's that's a beautiful, beautiful part of uh, finishing off our chat here, Shiana. And you know that is exactly the 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 um, ethos and the ingredients that I'm instilling and listening to that and talking like this. And I get off good, my good, good. now and then I, I lock in as well, and we keep each other accountable to a degree, don't we? Yeah, yeah. that's I'm, that's that's right. Yeah, and yeah, and keeping right. ourselves accountable, ourselves meaning no matter who you are, no matter who you are. Doesn't matter, no. you know. Hold, you know, keep it. Yeah, that's great stuff. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, give my love. Give my love to everybody in Australia. Yeah, man. All my friends, you, yeah, and uh, yeah, I appreciate yeah. you having me. And I always love to see you and talk awesome. to you. It's always inspiring to me as well. And yeah, uh, I'm awesome. gonna, I'm gonna probably, I'm gonna probably hit my heavy bag here after we get done. Look at that There's thing. A, yeah, it's got yeah, your name got, on it. 
Great That's shot beautiful. there. Yeah, yeah that is gonna, great shots. Walk us around there. there. Walk us around. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Isn't, that a, isn't that a nice picture there? Yeah. Well, it's a mess right It's a mess right now. No, don't worry about that. That's okay. Girl. That's all right. It's, this it's, is it's a, a, it's a, it's that's a weight machine. That, that opens up. Oh, yeah, 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 yep, yep, yeah. yep. So it's it's a bit of a mess. But, no, that's uh, good. No, that's not a mess. That means shit, shit's being used and things are, things yeah. are happening. Well, I want to show, show you outside, though. Yeah, please. Oh, look see. at that, ladies and gents. Isn't that there? Look at that. That yeah, is Colorado. Sh- Boulder, Colorado. You, but I've got to show you my license plate, though. What do you got? You got some uh, rattlesnakes out there? Oh, shit. Look at that. Yep. There he is. Look at that. Yeah. And there's, <laughs> there's Lula. Yeah. Hi, Lula. You, come you on. You guys got some Wait. snakes out your way there? We got, come on. We got snakes. We've got uh, mountain lions. We have bear. Fuck, mountain lions? No. Nah. All right. Mountain lions, bear. No wonder oh, yeah, you're practicing sure. all this shit. No wonder you. <laughs> we see. Oh, you them. can't fight a mountain lion. I go like this. <laughs> yeah, no, they, no that, they, that, they, that. they scatter off. They scatter off. We have, so, we have, a, you know, nowhere near the equivalent of a mountain lion, but it's, you know, foxes, um, yeah, is, foxes is, is, our, is, our, is our nasty one as a, as a pet cat type thing like dog. But yeah, we're lucky out uh, here in Melbourne. I'm on the surf coast. So we've got, hey, you, do, oh. do you have, you, it's springtime for us now. We have hay fever. You heard of hay fever? Oh. Yeah. Fuck, we got it here bad, really yeah. bad here. Yeah. Now that 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 is the enemy of people at the at the moment. That, Dude, not, get it, get a take your Zyrtec. Yeah, that's it. Use your medicine. It. Uh, but so, Shian, lovely talking anyway, to you. Thank you so much. You as well. Stay in touch. You're welcome. And um, yes. say hi to everyone there for us as well. Keep training hard. Oh, uh, oh Sensei, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Us, awesome, everybody. Us, awesome. everyone. Us. Thanks, everyone. We'll speak to you soon on the next one. Us.